Hi, Dawn the Stitching Coach here. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to get started hand embroidering. So before we do that, make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and ring the bell below so that you don't miss a single episode. Let's get started. Once you're ready to start embroidering, the first thing you need to do is select a pattern. Commercially made patterns will give you instructions on what type of fabric to get, what type of thread to get, and most often what type of needle you'll need and other notions. Once you've picked a pattern and you've decided on what you're going to make, the different types of mediums you could sew on are paper, plastic canvas, they're very similar, both have holes that are pre-made and then you can cut these to whatever size you're going to use or even weave fabrics like linen or Iata fabric. These even weave fabrics are called even weave because they have the same number of threads vertically and horizontally, the same number. So when you hear something like 14 count, that means you have 14 threads per inch. So everything has to have the same number. Aida is different from linen because Aida has even smooth threads that are bound together and woven together to make up an even smooth thread woven in and out. Linens, however, you can sometimes see lumps and bumps and burrs and you can often see how some threads are bigger or smaller than others. You can even sew on felt or even high quality quilting cottons with the use of what's called waste canvas. This can also be cut to size, basted onto your fabric, embroider whatever design you want using your pattern and following the directions on your pattern and then you tear this away when you're done. If you've watched my other previous video, you'll know that I love Jane Greenoff's The Cross Stitcher's Bible. She talks more about all of these. So let's talk about getting started actually sewing. You've picked your pattern, you've picked your fabric, you've picked your thread. We're now going to thread the needle. I'm using a number 17 tapestry needle. I'm using a number 5 pearl cotton and I'm using, let's count how many threads per inch we have. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 threads per inch. So this is a 20 count even weave. First thing is you're going to thread your needle. The way I do this is I create a loop, I grab the needle and put it inside that loop, pull it tight, and then I take the eye of the needle and place it above that loop and if it's really tight you might want to rock it back and forth. Pull that through. That's a basic threading the needle. If your pattern calls for multiple threads to be on the needle. For instance, if you want to do two threads, I like to do what's called the no knot method. So I'm going to fold the thread in half. I'm going to fold it so I have that loop at the end and I'm going to thread the loop through the eye of the needle. The loop is going to stay long and the single strands are going to stay short. Make sure the single strands are even. If they're not even, just reposition so that those ends are even. And again, as you're sewing, this loop is always going to be the long side and the single strands are always going to be short so that you don't lock your needle and you can't get it back out. So there's two basic ways to start stitching. Again, the no knot method that I like, here's how it goes. I'm going to make a cross stitch, which is an X. And I'm going to go over two threads. 
So I'm going to take my needle from the back of my work and I'm going to pull it almost all the way. But instead of pulling it all the way through, I'm going to go over two threads. So I'm going to go up one, two, and go over one, two. And I'm going to enter from the front going to the back. And I'm going to slip this loop over the needle and I'm going to pull it through until it's taut. Don't pull too hard because then you're going to pucker the fabric and you're going to create a little pleat and you don't want to do that. That's the first half of a cross stitch. Let's make the other half of cross stitch. So entering, if you think of these as boxes where the holes are inside those holes is a little box, okay? And those correspond with the boxes on your pattern. So I'm going to go over two threads from that first one that I did here in the bottom left corner. So I'm going to go over two threads from there. And then I'm going to go over two threads from this top right one. So one, two, which is right, lines up right up above that right leaning slash. And that is a basic cross stitch. Now, let's say we don't want to start with the no knot method. Let's say we want to start and not have a loop on the back like that. We want to anchor it down instead. Let me take this out. And when I take this out, the other method, let's say I only want to use one strand and I don't want to use two strands because two strands were too thick. I'm going to thread my needle and I'm going to create a little slip knot on one side. So a slip knot is like tying your shoes. You're going to bring the thread over and under and you're going to pull it through the loop and you're going to pull it tight just like you're creating a bunny ear on your shoelaces. And then pull that tight until you have a little slip knot. It's called a slip knot because if you pull it apart opposite directions, the knot slips out. Okay, so let's do that again. So I'm going to create a slip knot. And then once I create that slip knot, I'm going to start from the front of my work instead of from the back. So I'm going to enter somewhere away from where I want to make my X or start my stitching. So I'm going to pull this until I get to that slip knot. And then I'm going to go to where I wanted to make my first stitch. And this needs to be far away from wherever your work is going to be. So if I'm doing this H, I want to make sure that my thread is somewhere over to the left and out of the way. If it's down here in the right corner or this upper right corner, I could accidentally stitch on top of it. Because on the back, you can see there's a little tail underneath. So once we make our stitch, again, I'm going to go over to to make a nice big X. I'm going to go over to to make the left leaning part of the X. And again, make sure that that thread is out of the way because you don't want to accidentally pierce that thread that's underneath. Now, when you're done stitching and you've completed your work, let's do two more stitches. So there's a second stitch. Let's do a last one. And now, if we're done with this project, and this is my, my last stitch of one, two, one, two. Let's go ahead and make this last stitch. Now you need to do something with that beginning thread and that ending thread. So you want to turn it to the back of your work, and you want to anchor your threads down. 
so that you don't have a knot on the back of your work. So you're going to weave this in and out of the threads and always try to go under a common color. Don't go under a lighter color with a darker thread because you'll see that on the other side. Once you have the working thread anchored, you cut that off. Now we need to deal with the very beginning tail. First, you unslip that knot, turn it back to your wrong side of your fabric, pull that thread out, and do the same as you did with your working thread, and anchor those stitches down, or anchor those tails down, underneath all of your stitches. And once you've anchored all of your tails, you then cut your work, and you're done. So now you know how to get started. Next, you need to learn some stitches. I'm planning a series of videos in the upcoming months about how to make a needle book that identifies and organizes your needles. Never buy duplicate needles again. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it and you can stitch along with me. See you next time.